Welcome to The Story of Christmas, a production of Westminster Presbyterian Church. It was widely regarded and written by Roman historians and poets that there would be a great leader born in the East and that there would come a great king, a great deliverer. The Roman historian Suetonius, speaking at the time around the birth of Christ, wrote, There had spread over all the Orient an old and established belief that a king from Judea was destined to rule the world. Another Roman historian, Tacitus, wrote that there was a firm persuasion that at this very time the East was to grow powerful and rulers coming from Judea were to acquire a universal empire. The Roman Empire controlled most of the civilized world and their empire stretched from Europe all the way to the Middle East. Israel and Palestine were under Roman rule. Before the birth of Jesus, there was a prophecy of the coming of a savior. This wasn't the first time there were rumblings about a Messiah coming to fulfill what was written in the Hebrew scriptures, but this time it was different. It caught the attention of Roman governors and eventually word got to Caesar Augustus. If you were a Roman leader, this talk of a king to be born in the East was unsettling. You have servants, lots of food, even in some cases running water. You have a great life. You don't want to be giving this up because of the prophecy that a king will be born in the faraway reaches of the empire. This prophecy had the attention of the Roman rulers. The promise of a king coming from the east was a threat. As we will see in the story, Jesus had no interest in dethroning a Roman governor or Caesar Augustus. He had a much higher calling. He came to establish a new type of kingdom. 2,000 years ago, the town of Bethlehem was an oasis with plenty of fresh water and fertile soil. Bethlehem was an agricultural and trading hub, making it an ideal resting place for travelers and traders. Bethlehem was a melting pot of people and cultures. It was just a small town, about 1,000 people at the time, but it was an important trading post. Bethlehem wasn't a destination. It was where travelers stopped on their way to their final destination. Visiting the town of Bethlehem is like stopping at Pea Soup Anderson's. It is everything for the traveler. It's a place you stop for gas and lunch and snacks, and then you get on your way. Within the seemingly insignificant town where travelers came and went, a set of events was about to be put into motion that would change forever the religious beliefs of people all across the world. In the city of Nazareth, there was a celebration. A poor carpenter named Joseph, son of David, was betrothed to a young girl named Mary. They were young and happy and were eager to start a family. The couple was to wed later in the year. However, their lives would take an unexpected turn that would come to define the earthly lives and spiritual lives of every person on earth. Mary is a teenager following in the customs of her time. She is happy to be engaged to Joseph, who was a descendant of King David, and I'm sure she was ready to be married and start a family. Before their marriage, the angel Gabriel appeared before Mary and said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How will this be, Mary asked, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Of course, Mary would have been very surprised and scared. The angel Gabriel tells her that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Mary would have known the history of her people. She would have grown up hearing the stories of God's Spirit, settling with leaders and prophets. But she was a poor girl, engaged to a poor carpenter named Joseph. She had to be scared. This would disrupt everything she and her fiance had been planning. Would she be ridiculed for getting pregnant before marriage? Would Joseph stay with her? Or would he leave? What would he think about the whole thing? As these thoughts are running through her head, the angel says, don't be afraid. The same four words that were used in the stories of old, of Abraham and of Isaac, of Jacob and of Moses. Mary also hears that her older cousin Elizabeth is pregnant. She goes to Elizabeth's house and finds out that she won't be alone. She places her faith and her trust in God. A miraculous thing is happening and Mary gets to be at the center of it all. Mary is a rock star. She's young, she's about to get married, and then the angel tells her she's gonna carry the son of God. Her whole life that she had planned was about to be turned upside down. 
Under the Roman rule of Caesar Augustus, it was decreed that all subjects under the Roman Empire would be required to register for a census. Since Israel and Palestine had been conquered by the Romans, all residents now fell under the control of the empire. Mary and Joseph were living in Nazareth when they received word that they were to register for the census. Since Joseph's family was from Judea, they were forced to make the 90-mile journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem to meet and register with the Roman governor. The experience was made even more difficult because Mary was in the late stages of her pregnancy. Imagine that you open your mail one day and it is a summons from the IRS. It requires that you travel from Los Angeles to Santa Barbara, but there's a catch. 2,000 years ago, there were no cars. Horses and carriages were only for the very wealthy, so you had to walk 90 miles. It's like walking from LA to Santa Barbara with no car, no phone, and by the way, you're nine months pregnant. There were two routes from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The first was the shortest, but it wound up through hilly terrain directly through Samaria. The Samaritans were known to be hostile to travelers, and there would be few inns and accommodations along the way. So Joseph likely chose the longer route, southeast through Jerusalem and, and finally into Bethlehem. The journey likely took a week to complete. In the Gospel of Luke, we learn that when Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, all of the inns were full and there were no rooms available, so they found a stable where they could rest. The census created movement all around the land, people coming and going, trying to get to the home of their ancestors. When Mary and Joseph got to his family's house, there wasn't any room. So they were invited to the place his family kept their animals, which was almost like a, a cave around the back and, and under the house. During the evening, Mary gave birth to her son, Jesus. She swaddled him and placed him in a manger, the same manger that was used to feed the farm animals. Babies just aren't born in stables and placed in animal feeding troughs. It's like a child being born in the back of a car today. It's really out of the ordinary. But that works well with this unlikely story because this newborn baby being born in the most unlikely place will become the roadmap for believers to find him. That evening, to announce the birth of Jesus the Savior, an angel appeared to the shepherds in their fields and the glory of the Lord shone around them. The angel said to the shepherds, be not afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy for there is born to you this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. The Bible tells us that while one angel delivered the message of the birth of the Savior to Mary, all the angels in heaven appeared to the shepherds. The event was simply too big to be communicated by just one angel. It was delivered by an army of angels. And the angels said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth good will toward men. The messaging to the shepherds is really important. These shepherds are several miles outside the town. They arrive in Bethlehem, but there is no address and no directions, only that they should look for a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Remember, there is no Waze app, no Google Maps. There's no form of communication other than signs and symbols, but it's enough direction and details that the shepherds can enter the town and find baby Jesus, just as the angels had directed them. The shepherds who visited Jesus became the evangelists of their time. They were the ones who told the story of the angels and spread the news of the birth of the Savior. Guided by the brightest star they had ever seen, three magi, or wise men, set off to witness the coming of the new king. They journeyed to Judea, where they informed the powerful Jewish leader, King Herod, of the star in the sky and its significance. King Herod asked the wise men to find the new king and then report his location so that he may worship him. The wise men left King Herod and traveled to Bethlehem and they did indeed find Jesus and Mary. They worshiped him and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, gifts fit for a king. In a dream the next night, the wise men learned that King Herod wanted to find Jesus, not to worship him, but to kill him. King Herod saw Jesus the king as a threat to his rule over Judea and wanted to eliminate all threats. This is the dark part of the Christmas story. King Herod was the most powerful leader in Israel and was highly successful at bringing wealth and prosperity to the region. He transformed Israel into the gateway for trade between the Roman Empire and Arabia and the East. But King Herod was concerned about the birth of this new king and wanted to stay in power. So using the wise men, he devised his plan to find the location of Jesus so he could kill him. The wise men knew through a dream that King Herod did not want to worship Jesus. He wanted to kill Jesus. So they outsmarted Herod. 
They took another path back to their countries in the east, and King Herod never learned the location of Jesus and Mary. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy and became the savior of the world. We celebrate Christmas each year to honor him, for he is the reason for the season.